Hi, I'm Kathy, and welcome to my show. So in the previous couple of videos, I was working on some um, pastels, uh, like some purples and some teals, and, and what got me going on this was I got this amazing color in, and it's uh, Windsor & Newton, Windsor Violet, and I opened up the tube of paint and I went, oh, this is yummy. I need to do a painting in this. So I mixed up my paint as I do with all my paints. I, I, it's a mixture of um, Floetrol paint and water um, that allows it to flow. Um, and so then I went about trying to figure out which colors I wanted to do. And one of the things I've done in my studio is I've created color palettes of all of my paints uh, because I just don't know what the paint is gonna look like once it's dry because uh, it looks like one thing in the tube and when it dries, it could look it could look different. It could be darker. It could be lighter. There could be more shimmer or not enough. Um, and what got me going on this was all of my metallics because I have one, seven golds and like five silvers. And I was like, okay, well, why and what's the difference in them? So I did up this palette, and you can see that the different shimmer for each of the ones, and. I found this to be a really valuable tool because now I can match the paints that I want with the shimmer that I want and know that it's going to, to look nicely together. Um, so I've done this for all of the rainbow colors. Um, here's my purples. Here's my blues. Um, and so once I, 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 I put the Windsor and Violet on and I found it was very similar to the um, Amsterdam's Permanent Blue Violet, but it just seemed deeper and richer. So I went, okay, well, I'm going to go with that. And I mixed my paints. Uh, and then it was about how am I going to match it up? And the way I like to do my paints is I like to have a dark and a light because I, I feel that the, the dark will accent the light, like, like almost frame it. So I've I picked out my purples and I chose the uh, Windsor Newton Windsor Violet. And I then went the Ultramine, uh, Amsterdam's Ultramarine Violet Light. And I thought that would be a nice compliment, you know, the dark and the light, shadowing it. Um, and for the first painting I did, I did um, the sky blue light and then the sea green. And I thought these two complemented each other quite nicely. Um, they're both fairly light. It wasn't as dark as I had kind of hoped. Um, and then, of course, the shimmer that I wanted was uh, the Decor's Extreme Sheen 24 Karat Gold. It's, it's kind of a go-to. Um, but the other, the, the other brand that I tend to migrate to in, in my paintings is the, uh, the Arteza Metallics. They are so gorgeous and they just, they're gorgeous. If you haven't tried them, I would definitely go out and try them. Okay, so the first painting I did, this is the first one I did. And you can see right in here and here is the sea green. And uh, I liked it, but I thought it overpowered it a bit. Um, the other thing I noticed was that there was a lot of lacing in the purple. I wasn't getting as much of the purple as I wanted. And the reason it does that, you get that amount of lacing, is that it's too runny. So I've just mixed up this dark purple and I got a whole bottle of it. So in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna let this set. The water's gonna evaporate a bit, shake it up. Um, actually, every time I come in, I shake it up. Um, and eventually it won't be as runny, so it'll, it's going to look fabulous. But again, and there wasn't very much shimmer in this. Like you, uh, I think you can see some of the gold in there. Like there's some gold here, but not as much shimmer as I like. So I went, okay, next painting. So the next one I did, I took out the sea green, and I, what I did is I added the Pebeo Iridescent Blue Green and matched up with the Sky Blue Light. So this is more of a contrast that I was looking for. And this is an iridescent, so I'm gonna get shimmer on this because I just love me some shimmer. So the second painting I did is this one here. And you can see the shimmer in here, this iridescent blue-green and the gold, and you get some of the dark purple in there. Um, and I have, I have some lacing in here and some cells, but I also have, um, so down here, I have movement down here. I like the flow look. So I really like this, like this whole part right here, actually, right there. I love what's going on here. 
and I love the way the gold comes down here. Like, I, I really like this. I'm going to be hard pressed to, to part with it. But again, it's still, you know, there's a lot of lacing because of the purple. But then I thought, well, let's try a different, different route. Uh, these were both, um, I call them puddle pour Dutch pours because you kind of put everything in a puddle and then you blow it out from there. So this one, I did a line. And I absolutely love this. I love the movement in it. I love the way it comes up and over to me it, and the way it goes back. It, it almost to me seems like a bit of a wave. Um, and then I've got this, the iridescent coming through, the, the blue green, the pebio. It To me, it's like a river of oh, shimmer. And the gold is very shimmery. And the purple is like, again, with the cells, but I've got more, more of the purple in it. So I'm really, really loving this one. And depending on the light, you get different, different looks. And then, so I'm still wanting to see more of the dark purple. So I switched it up. I added, uh, for my final painting, I did an Amsterdam blue violet. And I replaced that with the Windsor and Newton. And this one I've had mixed for a while. Um, it's also a different brand, but uh, it's been sitting there for a while. So a bit of the water has evaporated. So with this one, and it's very close in color to the Windsor and Newton violet. Um, the Windsor Violet, which, like I said, I love the color, and it's this is very close to it. So this is my fourth one, and I did I did the circle, and this one I have a lot more purple, which is what I was looking for. I've got some beautiful cell action. I've got some. Oh, this I'm not sure if I can get that. It kind of reminds me of peacock colors. It's got the, uh, the 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 teal in there, the pebio blue green, and the gold, but I've got more of the purple, which is kind of what I was hoping for as well. So I, I adore this one. It's gorgeous. So on all of my paintings, I put tape on the back because I want to have a nice clean edge on it. So I date mine. So it tells me when I'm pouring and uh, when I can bear, uh, varnish. Yeah, varnish. I always say varathane. I don't know why, but it's varnish. Um, I like to use Liquitex gloss varnish. Uh, the last one I did, I for some, some reason, I, everywhere I go, I try and pick this up because for there's some, some supply issues going on. Um, and I picked up a small bottle, all I saw was gloss varnish. Well, it turns out it was high gloss varnish and it looks amazing on uh, the painting I varnished the other day. It's like, oh, and it looks amazing. I am just so thrilled with it. I haven't gotten into using um, resin yet, my studio is kind of, kind of dusty, um, and I haven't got all the things that I need to make sure that when I pour the resin, it's actually going to be you know dust free and and easy easy to, easy to to do. Um, I'm working on that. I will get to it eventually. So those are the four paintings I did. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can bring this up and you can see the shimmer. This is the one I did the other day. That's the high gloss varnish. Now. It looks rather dark, but depending on the, on the angle, it gets lighter. I actually have put this in my office, and when I walk in, it's, I'm looking at it from this way, and it's, and it's light, and it's, it's shimmery. Uh, there's like three or four metallics and iridescence in this, and it's just gorgeous. But when you walk, look at it the other way, it's actually quite dark. Um, and I'm sorry, you can't really see that in the... Oh, it's just so hard to see it, but it's gorgeous. Put that back up there. Okay, so these are the thought processes you go through with color. Um, consistency is key. Uh, like I mentioned before, the Windsor, uh, Windsor Violet was a little too runny. Um, I do do test sheets. I have um, uh, like a piece of... A report cover, an old report cover, and I put like four drops of each of the colors on it, and then you tip it up, and you do you see if how they're running down the 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 page, um, and then you try and, and adjust the flow for each. Um, invariably, I'm going to have to add more water because some are thicker than others, um, and all these paints, they're all mixed the same. So some some of them are uh, depending on the brand, they're a little bit runnier than the others. Um, but, you know, but consistency is key. Uh, if you've got something that's 
too runny, too watery, you're going to get lots of cell action. Um, but and I do like cell action, but I also like I like I like movement. I like flow. Um, this right here, the flow, this action here, it's oh, I cannot tell. There we go. But you can see the movement of the paint, and I find that just so pretty. So there you go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you, and I'm going to I got I have three paintings that need varathane. I've been stuck in an office in front of a computer all week, and I have not had a chance to get things done. So I've got the things start to stockpile up. So I'm going to show you how to how I varathane my paintings. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back now. Um, so these are three paintings that I did on St. Patrick's Day, nice and green. Um, and I did all of them, I used the same colors and each of them was uh, painted differently. So this one here, I put the paint around the outer edge and blew it in. This one I did a circle and blew it out. And this one I just did some lines um, and then I took a cake spreader and just mushed it around and then I had some blank spots so I did some more uh, pores and you see all of my lacing here and uh, let's see if you can see it oh, you see all the lacing here that's uh, because my I had too much liquid in my paint so it was a little bit runny and then I finished it off with a mandala because I just felt like doing something a little bit different so when I, uh, when I varnish uh, paintings, they've been sitting for three weeks. I like to wait three weeks and that allows all of the paint, even though it, you know after 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever, it's dry to the touch. But to get all the moisture out of the paint, you need to let it sit about two or three weeks before you varnish it. And um, the reason being is you can put the varnish on and then as you're going, your, your color might bleed because it's not completely dry and it's not, um, it still has moisture in it. So I don't know about you, but at my house, uh, it's a bit dusty. So um, before you varnish, you get a nice clean cloth, um, you know, just regular, I don't know, uh, microfiber cloths? Yeah, microfiber cloth. And then I go off and I wipe it all down, just getting all of the dust off. Give a shake up. And of course, I'm just stirring up the dust in here when I do that. So, you know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> the reason you want to get all the dust and everything off is, is once you put on a coat of varnish, if you've got something on there, like a speck of dust or a dog hair or your own fur, you know, um, it's really, really hard to get out once the varnish is dry. So you just want to make sure that's all clean. Um, the method to, that I do my varnishing on is I will do one side, like I'll, well, I'll show you, but I, I pour it along the top. I have this, this, you know, the spongy brushes you get. Don't go with the dollar store ones. They're cheap. They have dust. They're bad. Go get it at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or Rona. Um, whatever, you know, a quality, or even a quality paint store. Um, but I get that. So I put a, a line of orange across here and then I slow, you know, I bring it down very softly. And I'm not going to be able to cover it all um, unless you've got it on really thick then possibly, but you don't want to do that because then you'll get lines in your, in your uh, air thing, in your varnish. So I will do that and then I walk away for three hours. I come back, I rotate it once clockwise, and this is the only way I can remember is doing it clockwise, and I do the exact same thing. Three, and then four, and then, you know, after a day, it's it's dry, it's beautiful, um, and then once it's completely dry, I use my heat gun, and I put it along the tape, like I take my pins out, take along the, the edge, because the varathane will, will, the varnish, see, I keep on calling it varathane, the varnish will kind of get a good seal. So if you if you heat it up, it's going to uh, 
release a lot easier and then you'll get this lovely clean line. Um, actually, I'll show you when I say a lovely clean line. You see how nice and clean that is? Yes, that's what we're going for. Okay, so let's get this going. Now this, I got, I've used this a couple weeks ago. It's almost on its last legs. They can't, you know, you, if you store it in, in, a, in plastic, it's, it's gonna, it'll, it'll be fine. This is still squishy to the touch. There's still varnish on it. Now it's all over my fingers. All right, so I'm using Liquitex gloss varnish. Um, I really like the shine on it. Um, and I just bought a huge big gallon of it recently. I'm really happy with that. So we'll start with this one. it back a bit to the edge so it goes over and then just bring it down very softly and the, the reason I do four coats is because I have not gotten everything here covered it's a fact of life that's just the way it is but by the time you finish with four coats then you've got it and then we just go around the edges And one of the things about varnish, do not shake the bottle. Because what happens is you're gonna get lots of bubbles. There's lots of bubbles in it anyway, uh, but you don't wanna compound your problem. So what you do is you take your, your, um, your little torch here, and you go over the edges. You go over the whole thing. And the goal here is to, is to pop the bubbles. Just like when you're painting, you need to pop the bubbles. And don't get so close that you torch it, which is what I happened. And you can't see it from where you are, but I can see where I am. I've, I see all of these pop bubbles, which create little, little bits of craters. And it'll smooth out a bit. And, and there's also a part here that the, bear, the varnish didn't quite get over. So this is why you do four coats. Okay. Done. Next. And one of the things about var varnishing is um, this is artist grade varnish, um, the professional, and it gives you UVA and UVB protection for your paints, so it will not fade over time or yellow. As you make this lovely piece of art, you really want it to last. And one of the things is you only do one, one swipe down. If you do more, you're going to create lines um, in your varnish and they're really hard to get out after the fact. You may find that you'll end up doing more, uh, more coats of varnish than you really want.
tempted to put my finger in there. No, torch it. All right. Now this is also where you start looking over it and you double check <laughs> all of your white and even going down looking like this to make sure that you haven't got any fur in there. I made the mistake of wearing a very lovely scarf shawl in one night and with it came lots of lint. So I was looking at this piece and I thought it was just part of the paint, like it was looking. And then when I got down, I could see that, no, that's a totally different height. And I had to scoop it out of my varnish. So needless to say, that took an extra coat. See, this has got something in it. There we go. There. And it's really important to get it off the white because it's really noticeable. And there we go. So now I'm going to walk away and I'll come back in three hours and rotate everything clockwise and do another coat. And uh, I'm not going to bore you with every coat. So when it's actually dry, I will bring you back and I'll show you what I do to get everything else off. Hey there, I'm back. Um, I did my last coat of varnish last night just before dinner and then there was nachos and there was wine so I did not get back last night to finish this video. So uh, nice beautiful sunny day today. I'm gonna go out and enjoy it a little bit later. So it's all finished. It's dry, touch. Um, now I'm gonna finish off the back part. So we start by taking out our, our push pins. Ugh, ouch. Take them out of your hand before you puncture yourself with them. There we go. And you'll see that, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's drips of uh, varnish all around the edges as well as paint. But that's all gonna come off. So I have this lovely little heat gun here. It helps to blow a little bit of air, but it's got great heat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat the edges and it'll make the tape come off a lot easier because it'll soften up the varnish. I just check the heat to make sure it's it's uh, hot enough, but <laughs> not gonna burn. And then we proceed to take the tape off. Ugh. Sometimes it's really easy, sometimes not so much. And then what I do is I pull it towards the center so it pulls off easier cleaner, less likely for it to tear, because that's a pain. <laughs> Just like that. Okay, let's heat that up some more. This part is so gratifying. Look at the clean edges. When I first started painting, I wasn't doing this. And boy, could you tell. My edges were so messy and I was working with black paint. There's black everywhere. I think of this as being so gratifying because, you know, I started this painting 
you know, about three weeks ago. And now it's finally, finally finishing. It's like waiting for Christmas, you know? And you unwrap it and you see this beautiful thing. Voila! Finished. Look at those beautiful clean edges. Oh. So this baby's ready for its forever home. Um, all of the, the paintings that I've done um, are all for sale. Um, and if you're interested in uh, anything that I have, or if you are, um, or if you would like a, a specific painting done with specific colors, I do commissions, and all of those details will be in my um, in the video description. How to how to contact me via email. I have a, a Facebook page where I have a for sale album, and it'll have all the paintings that are currently for sale there. And uh, yeah, until next time. See you later.